Hey everybody, yes. welcome back to this awesome channel. Today we have an amazing guest. We have a friend of mine, Sylvia. She's been on before when she did, I think it was a 40 day juice fast, right? Yeah. Yes. And now she is done. Today is her one year raw vegan anniversary. She has been eating raw fruits and vegetables for one year. This is monumental. This is epic. These videos are so amazing and so huge when people do this. So I can't wait to bring this to you guys. We're going to find out everything that happened for her in this journey. Has she lost weight? Has her friends changed? I don't know, health problems fixed, why she did it, every single thing. You guys have a bunch of questions. So let's hop right into it. Hey, how's it going? You're in Poland. I'm in Toronto. What's going on? Everything is good. Just missing the sunshine. Last time we spoke, I was in Mexico. So now I'm in Poland and it's a little bit cold. <laughs> yeah. And you travel a lot. So I'm excited to hear how you've kind of made this lifestyle work while traveling. But first I want to start it with, okay, so one year, what has been your favorite part? What has been the best part about all of this? Best part definitely is my hair growing and like having new hair growth that happened probably six months into my journey. So at first I was very, very scared because my hair was actually falling out and people were telling me it's normal. You're kind of getting rid of the old, uh, you're detoxing and really it started growing back. My hair is so much thicker, better. I just feel great in general, just overall clarity. I just feel like I have no addictions, you know, cause food is an addiction. So it just feels really good to have that kind of you're in control of what you eat and you're in control of your, your life. Yeah. No addictions. That's a good point. And you were drinking before too, right? Were you smoking or like, how was your lifestyle before this? And do you miss that lifestyle? So prior to the one year before I did the 40 day juice fast, I was drinking socially. I mean, I was watching what I ate, but I wasn't vegan. I wasn't raw. I mean, I ate fruits, I ate vegetables and salads and all that. I, I was mindful. I just didn't know there was this type of lifestyle available. I didn't even know this existed until um, I kind of started following you and looking at Shane's videos. So yeah, prior I was drinking, I was just kind of living the regular life like everyone else. Yeah, like everyone else. Yeah. And so how so what like led you into all of this? I can't remember from our juice fasting interview, but like, what you did the juice fast, and then did you go raw? Or did you like go raw after that? Like, what sort of led you to go into this? And how long did it take to notice changes? So for me, I didn't have any health issues. I was just inspired by seeing one of Shane's videos talking about cellulite. And I was one of those people that, you know, I exercised, I drink a lot of water, I watched my diet, but I always had cellulite, even when I got slim and lean and, and in great shape. And he made a video talking about how it's all animal protein, fats and all that. And I was like, okay, this is interesting. Uh, so I watched some of his videos, I joined his group, and I was just going to do like a one week juice fast, just kind of detox my body, um, reset, nothing crazy. And after one week, I said, you know what, why not? I, I might as well just go all in. And the group really helped me because I would see a lot of people's stories and journeys, how they did like 100 days a year, you know, so such a long time. So I said, you know what, why not? I'll do 40 days. And I, I felt great after a week. I wasn't hungry. And when I completed my 40 days, my plan wasn't to quit drinking. My plan wasn't to go raw vegan. My body simply demanded it. When I finished it, it was like my body wanted and craved avocados and tomatoes and cucumbers. Like I just didn't want to ruin the 40 days that I just did. And I saw an amazing improvement. I saw crazy stuff coming out of my body. So I'm like, why am I going to go back to drinking and yeah. eating crap when I... 40 day fast. So for me, that was crucial. That was life changing. I don't think I would have stuck to this. Wow. Um, if I hadn't done fast, because that was like, I just didn't want to waste that. And then everything just kind of fell into place after I did that. So I had no plan. It was just like, let's do a reset. Let's do a juice fast. Um, and then I just binge watched a bunch of videos, got a bunch of recipes, got inspired, got my dehydrator. And then I started experimenting and I said, wow, this is amazing. I love it. Um, it's quick. It's easy. I did my blood work six months into it. My blood work is amazing, better than it's ever been. I've always been low on iron and now my iron was actually um, a little bit higher than it should be, which I take that as it's fine. Wow. Interesting. Um, yeah, so everything was great. So without any meat, without any protein, really just fruits and vegetables, my iron was high. So once I saw the results, I'm like, that's it. I know this works. I know I feel great. 
Because at first, a lot of people were like, you're crazy. What are you doing? I came to Poland. What, like this was when I was four months into my journey in the summertime. So people were not used to that. People here are not used to, you know, vegan, let alone raw vegan. They're like, what do you eat? Are you not going to get sick? You're going to get like, they were just shocked. There was a lot of peer pressure, a lot of explaining. So I kind of did the blood work just to kind of prove every, everyone wrong. Like, listen, I'm fine. <laughs> Here are my results. <laughs> yeah. And it was more, more for them, not for me. Cause I knew I was fine. I knew how I felt. I, I've always been in tune with my body, listen to my body. Um, but I did notice when I was a hundred percent raw. So I was a hundred percent raw probably for like 10 months. Yeah. I was losing a lot of, I was losing way too much weight. I was getting wow. really skinny here and I just didn't want to get too lean. And I was eating a lot. Like I was eating all day, like no limits. I wasn't watching my diet and I was still losing weight, but I was exercising daily as well. So I just added like soups here and there and maybe like sweet potato or regular potato steamed with some broccoli yeah. once in a while and that really helps me bring my mass up a little bit which I'm kind of happy with my weight now so if you want to lose weight definitely it works so I had to kind of bring uh some cooked food once in a while just to kind of maintain my my weight that I want yeah and I'm glad it worked for you to transition like with the juice fast. I think if I were to go back, I would probably do that. I just went right into eating like whole raw food. But I think for people who want to, like that's a great transition too. And that was a great video we did. So if you guys are wondering about Sylvia's experience on her 40 day juice fast, I'll link it below and I'll also put it on the screen at the end of this video so you guys can catch that. But okay, so how have you been eating? Like, and how have you been feeling? Like, do you notice a difference in your happiness? I know that was like a huge thing for me going raw and just eating like real food. It was a big, huge difference and still is like in how I feel. So has that been the case for you or do you not notice much difference? Oh, no, absolutely. I just feel energized all day. I don't have any dips in the day. I don't feel sleepy or tired. Um, from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to sleep, I have full energy. I don't feel bloated. I don't have issues with digestion. You know, people around me complain all the time. Oh, my stomach hurts. I'm bloated. Um, and the other thing I noticed that I literally, when I eat pure 100% raw, I'm not even gassy, which is yeah. crazy. And that's the one I noticed. I don't know about you, but when I have like, you know, cooked soup or like a vegan dish right away, I'm gassy. Yeah. So my body's like, no, no, it's, it's great. Not, did it's you notice a difference on out. your digestion? Like when, when you went raw, like, did you notice, especially the first few months, like a difference in digestion or no? Well, the first few for a few months, my digestion was not the greatest. I had to take enzymes. And then I can't remember how long it took for me to just be able to digest anything. Like right now, when I eat, I can mix fruit, I can mix mix vegetables. It doesn't matter. My digestion's great. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. But I know that when I do implement something cooked right away, my digestion's off. Wow. Interesting. And so take us through a day of eating, like throughout this like year, how have you typically been eating in a day? So typically in the morning I wake up, I don't usually eat. I start my day with, with a matcha latte. Cause I love those. I've replaced my coffee. So it's almost two years that I quit coffee. So I have that with like a nut milk and then I wait a couple hours and my first meal is usually like a big bowl of fruit, mixed mm -hmm. fruits. Or I have my green juice. Every day I have my green juice. Sometimes I have it in the morning. Sometimes I have it in the afternoon. The lemon ginger blast. So good. Or my other go-to, I love making these like uh, dehydrated bread. It's dehydrated bread. We can link the, it's from Eva's Raw. Eva Loves Raw? Yes. Yeah. She has great. an amazing on this bread that I make. It's, it's so delicious. And I, I've, I've been making it religiously. Uh, since day one. So I have that with like a vegan nut butter that I make, uh, sorry, cashew cheese, some tomato slices, some cucumbers. And that's, that replaces like my sandwiches. Cause I, I used to love uh, sandwiches. So that's my breakfast. Or sometimes I'll do like a chia pudding, just very simple. Um, and then in the afternoon, I'll have like uh, zucchini noodles with a sauce. I get one of your sauces that you've, you've, yeah. I love those, the Alfredo or the, so um, Oh, those two are my favorite. I'll make salads at least once a day, like a huge salad. And I'll make like a mm, vegan cashew sour cream as my dressing. I really mm -hmm. like that with salt and pepper, just plain. Yeah. And just, and, and that, and then when I get hungry, I'll just have some fruit. I'll snack on dry fruit. Yeah. I love dry fruit as well. 
like and dried mangoes. Felt, and I have mm-hmm. you felt like satisfied or have you felt like I'm hungry? I know some people think like I try this lifestyle, I try to get really healthy and I'm like always like starving. You don't, you haven't felt like that. No, I'm never hungry, but I do eat a lot. And I love this because I always enjoyed eating and I always overate. So now I eat without having that guilt because I know I'm eating fruits, vegetables, I'm eating healthy stuff. So when I do tend to snack or binge eat, it's, it's good food. You know, that doesn't make you gain weight. Yeah. So So you feel like it's helped like any like food addiction that you've had. Definitely. Definitely. I just feel so much more energized. I feel healthier my skin like people tell me my skin is glowing all the time that I don't look my age so I know it's definitely working yeah and how old are you in case people wonder because they always ask how old my guest is they get mad if I don't ask (laughs) if you're okay with sharing yeah I'm gonna be 41 in April yeah same age as me yeah you look good your skin is really glowing you look so good and have you felt like you're missing out at all I know some people are like Cause you know, most of the world doesn't eat this way. And like a lot of people feel like they're missing out. So has that been a thing for you? No, I still go to restaurants quite often, but I, I always eat before I go. So I go full. And then when I go there, I'll have like a little snack, like a salad or like a tea. So I'm never missing out and people never watch what I eat. So everyone's kind of used to it right now. Yeah. Okay. And has your life changed at all? I know like what I notice when people like drastically change their lifestyle, they get healthy, they do juicing. Like, I don't know. Lots of times people seem to get mental clarity and then they're like, I want to do a new job. I want a new relationship. I want to move. Has has, like your outer world changed at all as your inner world has? Actually, yes. There has been a lot of changes. I broke up with my boyfriend that uh, of three years. So it just changed the fact that we had such different lifestyles and he still drank so there was a lot of things that came up that I didn't see before when I was drinking and and just eating regular food so definitely shed more light on me and made me realize that you know he's not the right person for me so that was huge I did a huge transition my relationship I basically left Mexico moved to Poland where my family's at um so now I'm I'm building my life here in a small town, small community. So I've had a lot of time to myself, just a lot of quiet time reflecting, um, kind of going inward. So it has helped me. I don't know if it's because of this diet, this lifestyle, but it's definitely um, working in a way that it's given me more peace and just to kind of sit with my thoughts and go more inwards, something that I've never really done in the past. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. And do you think that you'll stay on it? Or do you think like, I know some people do it and they do it more of like a cleanse, like I'm going to do a one year raw, be like a detox cleanse. Do you think it's been more of that for you? Or do you think you'll like keep it up or like make changes, like tweak it up a bit? I mean, I've always liked salads, smoothies, juices. So for me, this wasn't very difficult. Um, The only thing I'll probably do is once a week, I'll probably have like a cooked vegan dish Mm -hmm. and I'll have my soups here and there just because 100% raw is difficult, especially when you're traveling or you're, you know, I'm living in a cold country now. It was a lot easier when I was in Mexico. So it works for me. It doesn't make me feel crappy. Like it'll make me feel a little bit gassy for the moment, but it's not like, oh my God, I feel like shit. Like I can't function. It's not like that. So I think I'm sick to that just to have some normalcy. I mean, ideally I know I should do hundred percent raw for two years, but like I said, I just get too lean and it doesn't look, I just don't look healthy when I'm hundred percent raw. I just look too lean. I don't know if I just have to go through that phase and let myself get lean. I don't know, but I did hundred percent raw for 10 months and I was just too skinny. Yeah. Well, you have to do what works for you and what makes you feel the best, you know, that's like, Mm -hmm. you work work out a lot. So that's like Kara, you know, Kara Brotman, I recently interviewed her in Las Vegas and she was like raw forever, right. For a long time. And she was saying how she added in some, some cooked food, I think like some tofu and some beans and some stuff like that. Cause I think she found that was better for her for like working out and she was getting thin too. So I think everybody just has to do like what's right for them. And okay, well, my viewers have so many great questions. But first, like, how has your weight changed? So because I can't remember what how your weight changed, like from before the juice fast, because you did the juicing and then the raw and all of this, you've like had a pretty clean year. So how has your weight changed mm-hmm. from before the juice fast to now? Or like, you know, for through this whole experience? I definitely lost weight. So initially, like I said, I lost a lot of weight, I went down to 140 pounds. And that's okay 
very low. I'm, I'm five foot nine. Okay. So I was 140 pounds, five foot nine. And I was always around 170 pounds. Wow. So at my best before the raw diet, I was probably 165 pounds. That was usually like my weight. That was good weight that I would always aim for. And now it's about 149. Yeah. And I feel good at this. About 146, 147 is like, I feel amazing that I have never been this weight since I was like a teenager. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Holy. And so now just, I'm a- yeah. <laughs> and I ask because people will ask about weight. And is there anything else that comes up that's like been amazing about this or not so amazing? Like anything else you want to share so far that I haven't asked that you can think of? Like my hair, like gray hair yeah. went away. I had gray hair here, but it's a lot less. Wow. And I have natural hair. So much thicker. So people, people that know me, they're like, holy, your hair is so thick. I've never seen your hair this way. And I have like baby hair growing everywhere. It, it's insane. Like at this age, I don't think we should be having new hair growth. Yeah, that it, your hair like, looks really good. But it's interesting. So you said at the beginning, it got worse though, your hair, right? Like at the beginning of this oh, process. Oh, it was horrible. See, that's I scary. was with my boyfriend at the time. Yeah. And he was like, you have to just die. Because I had clumps of hair every every morning in the in the garbage bin. And he would see it and he was concerned. And he's like, well, still, like, you got to stop this. And I said, no, I'm, I'm sticking to it. I'm sticking to it. And it lasted about a month. And then I just had this amazing regrowth of hair. Like it stopped falling out. Um, and I started watching videos. I know um, uh, Christina, she did a video on hair loss. And she was talking yeah. about that. So it's very common. And a lot of people get freaked out and stop. So I just, I just trusted the process. And that's why being a part of group or having a coach is so important. Because otherwise, yeah. like if I was doing this on my own, I freak out like no I need to stop true you me know, too so. I think I never really went through that well shortly after going raw, I had a baby and then I had a lot of hair loss but I was just like oh this is the hormones but I think it was like pretty excessive and then I started supplementing and like changing my diet a bit too like st- I still stayed all raw but then my hair got better than ever I've always had like really fine hair but my hair is like so healthy it's thicker oh, I know you like- some And it grows so fast. So that's great. And okay, so somebody said, what is the biggest change you've noticed? And how did you stay motivated? That's a good question. Because it's hard for people, right? People want to do this. And they're just like, I can't like, so good questions. You know what, what kept me motivated was just following a bunch of older raw vegans that looked amazing, and their skin was glowing. And so for me, I just want to look the best way I can while I'm aging. So many women are doing Botox and all these surgeries. And I'm like, no, I want to be like clean inside out. And I just wanted to kind of make it a mission for myself that I can do it with food. And also being a part of obviously the groups where you see different people's stories and testimonials. And obviously for the poor animals, like that's huge, you know, watching videos on how they're murdered and how it's just horrible. Like the industry is just disgusting. So that's, that's yeah, obviously a huge, it really it is. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's horrible. And and just knowing now what I know, like you don't need me to be healthy. And that's yeah. what a lot of people think. They need all this animal protein. You don't need that. Like, and it's it, just it's, so it's excessive insane. now. It's so excessive. Like a lot of people just have it, it every meal. I used to have it every meal, you know, like breakfast, eggs, lunch, salmon, dinner, chicken, like it really common for me to have it like every meal, which yeah. now I just blows yeah. me away. I think it's crazy. I think it's so excessive. And if people think this is extreme, they don't want to do this. Okay. Go whole foods, plant-based and just have some animal products now and then, then. not like every day. Right. No, it's so bad. It's so bad. And, and I was like, it's just a trap. I think it's just a marketing big business trap where they want you eating all this protein. But then I learned that it's so toxic for your kidneys. There's it's so acidic for your body it takes so much energy to digest from your body. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously, killing the animals and the factories and the pollution. And I'm I go to the gym and I'm building more muscle now than I ever have in my life. So you know, it's true. We don't need that much protein that they say we do. Yeah. And think about all the things that happen. That like reminds me of this guy, Lawrence, I interviewed recently. He was a bodybuilder eating a lot of meat and he got a lot of health problems. He had diabetes, high cholesterol, high blood pressure. The doctor was like, this is getting really bad. Like you have to make a change. You have to go plant-based. And then within nine months, he was off all medication. He went whole food plant-based, reverse diabetes, all the health problems gone. So I just, 
I think the excessive meat consumption causes way more problems than people realize, and especially the processed foods, the alcohol, all the crap. It's just so crazy. And it affects your mind. Yes. Don't you feel like a big difference in how you felt yeah. like drinking and just eating everything versus now? Oh, absolutely. I wake up in the morning. I'm fresh. I go to the gym. I never have days where I'm like, oh, I don't want to go to the gym. Or now I'm excited to go for a walk, to go for a bike ride. Like I just, I want to be active. Like my body just wants to keep moving. It's amazing. So yeah. And, I, and then I, I love the video. Um, There's a few videos you did uh, with Dr. Elizabeth where it is mindset. It's like, my motivation is knowing that like I'm putting amazing things for my body. Like my body's going to function amazing. My brain's going to function amazing. It's like, what is the point, you know, to feel like crap, to poison ourselves. So I really feel like this is loving yourself at the maximum level. Like when you take care of your body, what you put in it, what you put on it, that is like self-love for me. And that's what keeps me going and what motivates me. And I also want to inspire other people because there's so many people out there living toxic lives. They're drinking the wrong water. They're eating the wrong food. It's just sad. And they don't have that guidance. So definitely just following people, have people that you're inspired by, have a coach, be a part of a group. I think that's like a huge motivator for me. Yeah. And okay. You bring up water. I don't, I don't think I said at the beginning, but you're a water expert. So you believe the Kangen water is the best for us, right? So talk a little bit about that. Did you drink a lot of water during this experience and you only drink Kangen, right? Yes. Only Kangen water. So I travel a lot. So I bring my machine with me. It's in my carry on bag. So just like you bring your juicer and your other gadgets, my machine yeah. always comes with me because I can wash my fruits and vegetables from pesticides properly. The water will be completely yellow, brown colors will come off. The food will taste different because it actually wow. brings it back to life. So it's ionized water. It has a negative charge. It's hydrogen restructured water. So it's basically living water compared to everything else. Like bottled water is dead water. It has no electrons. It has yeah. no life force. So that's it is just a brand. It just means return to origin. The machine is bringing my water back to its original state, how it's found in nature. And it's an amazing company. It's Japanese. It's 50, actually, I'm going to Japan for our 50th year anniversary this June. So I'll be taking a lot of videos. Uh, we'll be answering a lot of questions and I'm going to see exactly the factory, how they build these machines. They're built by one technician in one factory. So, and it's the only medical machine in the world. So uh, it's, yeah. that changed my life seven years ago. So I've always been into that, like trying to help people just by changing their water, which definitely tr I've seen amazing transformations in health and reversal of different diseases just by changing their water alone. But I find the water with this diet, it's like a whole nother level. Like you can clean your food, you can eliminate toxic cleaners from your home. So to me, this is just another tool, especially if people have a hard time maybe going all raw. This has an abundance of antioxidants. So like one juice, one glass would be equ equivalent to like a hundred like truckloads of berries and antioxidant strength because it's all about the hydrogen, which is the lightest, strongest, most bioavailable antioxidants in the universe yeah so that's what the water has all I never the, thought about this, it before the... like I never thought about before how that's like living water because like this water yeah it's not right so that's why I like to drink a lot of coconut water juices but I still need water so that's I want to get a king and machine I think it's great and you sell those too I think right so I'll put your link down below I'll put all your information below in case yeah. anybody wants to contact you to get one but I love I I tested one of those once because they have a place here on Bloor Street called Peach Tree where you can like test it. So I tested it and I love the water. So definitely get one from yeah, Sylvia if you guys want one. It is really really good water. I loved it when I tested it. And somebody said my most pressing concern is protein. At almost sixty six year old female, I keep hearing we need more even plant based. So how did you meet your protein needs? I know you touched a little bit about on that did it worry you did you do research like anything you learned that you can share yeah so like I said I'm just I'm going based on how I feel how my body feels going to the gym my whole life I'm actually building more muscle now as a raw vegan I'm not eating any any animal protein I'm not making any smoothies I'm not using any powders I'm simply getting my protein probably from sprouts I do a lot of sprouting so like the alpha alpha broccoli sprouts and just fruits and vegetables, which are, which I've learned are the amino acids that are the most important that protein is like recycled. I, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it exactly, but it made sense when I heard it somewhere. So 
I know with myself, I'm building more muscle now than I ever did before. So, and I don't track my protein. I don't know how much I'm eating a day. I'm just eating raw fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And okay. Somebody was asking about water. We just talked about that, but they said, how much do you drink? I don't think we shared that. And they said, I find it interesting since going raw vegan, I don't drink as much water because my food is so hydrating. Me too. I don't drink as much water because my food is so hydrating, but I still do find I need water, especially if I have salads or nuts or things like that. And like you said, if you're having dehydrated foods, I think you feel like you need more water. And it's good that your water cleans off the pesticides. I never thought about that. That's really good. But how much water do you find you're drinking a day? So it really depends on your activity level, depends on your weight. And there's a calculation you do based on your body weight and your level of activity if you're drinking coffee if you're drinking alcohol that's also going to determine how much water you need i also eat raw i i eat lots of salads i I juice every day and i'm still finding that i'm thirsty i still need water even when i did my 40-day juice cleanse i was doing five liters of juice per day and i was still doing two liters of water just because i needed it i yeah i needed it And now I drink probably at least four liters a day still of my water. Wow. That's good. Because again, you're active. Every time we walk, we we talk, we're sweating, you're losing water constantly. So you have to, it's not like something that it's on reserve. You're losing it all the time by living, right? So we definitely have to replace it. Yes, raw vegan diet will help you Mm -hmm. be more hydrated than the average person, but I still think we need more. Yeah. No, I'm all for being like really hydrated. That's when your brain functions at its best and you feel your best too, like physically. And somebody said, has she overcome cravings? And was she hungry at first? Did she notice detox symptoms? If so, what kind of symptoms and how long? And how were you eating before going raw? Sorry, I know that's a lot of questions at once. So maybe how did you overcome? How did you overcome the cravings? And were you hungry at first? So I find the, like I said, the juice fast really helped me overcome the cravings because you're kind of eliminating old junk, old bad bacteria that's kind of craving sugar and crap. So once you get that out of your system, I did a couple colonics while I did my juice fast. I did not crave it. The only time I started craving it here and there was when I did start having a little bit of cooked food here and there. Mm -hmm. But if you stick on raw, there are no cravings. Plus, when I have my water, I feel satisfied. I feel hydrated because a lot of people reach for food and cravings because they're dehydrated and your body doesn't know the difference whether you're hungry or thirsty and people overeat when really they're just dehydrated. So for me, I just I still get cravings once in a while. Like, I'm not going to lie when I'm out with my friends and I see them eating pizza or something like that you know, it, it, like you smell it, it does bring back, you know, the, 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 yeah. the cravings and <laughs> yeah. stuff. That, but no, you just overcome it. You're just saying, no, it's not worth it. I don't want it. And then just, I have some water. I have juice. I always have snacks with me. That's why, you know, I, I don't fall for, for you have to be organized and plan ahead. So anytime yeah. I'm going out, I know I'm going to be longer. I always have my water with me. I always have some kind of snacks, fruit, nuts in my, in my purse. Yeah. So I know when I'm hungry or sitting out with someone, I can have a date. Oh, I eat a lot of dates when I'm, when I'm craving something sweet, I have dates. I love them. Mm-hmm. And that definitely helps. So just kind of replace your cravings, bad cravings for good ones. So like, if you like dessert or sweets, just make like raw, vegan, <laughs> healthy sweets, mm-hmm. you know, like have like, the- uh, with eating the dates or like the fruits and stuff in general, have you noticed any negative changes with your teeth or has your dental health been like fine the whole time? No, it's been fine. I know that they talk about that, but I, I eat quite a bit of dates and um, like dry fruit and I don't have any issues. Oh, good. Perfect. Okay. And somebody said, yeah. Did you notice detox symptoms? I know you said with your hair, you had the hair loss and then it, that's yes. crazy. Well, the hair was a big one, but I also had like this rash on my skin on the right side for me- like probably six months. It just recently went away. Mm-hmm. So I had like this dry itchy patch on one side of my skin. It was really irritating. It was just dry, red, itchy. Um, and I also lost um, a nail on my toe, which wow. is crazy. And it regrew better because it was like kind of weird before. And it was weird. One day I was just like playing with it and it just came right off. And then just new nail grew out, which I've never had that happen in my life. So I think that's something to do with that. 
Wow. That's cool. I think so too. Yeah. And how were you eating before? But I think we touched on that a bit. Somebody was asking how you yeah, ate before. Like, like I was eating healthy. I was eating healthy, but I did have seafood. I had chicken. I had meat. I wasn't eating. I was still like mindful. Like I was buying healthier meat, but yeah. And do you miss, have you missed meat, meat at all? Do you miss it at all or no? no not at all. That's good. Not at all. That's good. I feel yeah. like the longer I'm raw, like the more turned off I get by me. Like I look at, if I see it, I'm just like, I don't know. It doesn't look attractive to me, you know, like the raw fruits. And you've and been vegetables. Raw forever. Yeah. The raw fruits and vegetables, they just look so vibrant and exciting. And I'm attracted to them. You know, when I see like, especially if I see like raw meat in a grocery fly flyer or something, I'm just like, oh. that's nasty. Like, I'm just like, well, no what? thanks. Well, one thing that really helped me was when, when you look at meat is like, you're taking on that energy that you're putting that dead energy into your body. And that really stuck with me. Like that animal, imagine what it went through when it was being killed, slaughtered, so much fear. And then you're putting that dead flesh into your body. Like it just, it's common sense to me now. It makes so much sense. Like, why did I eat that? Like, if you believe in energy and that we're energetic beings, it's, it doesn't make sense to eat meat or anything that's like overly cooked because it's just there's no life force. Me too. That's a big thing for me too. And especially even with the dairy too, you know, because like just the way the dairy yeah. industry is done and how they get them pregnant to take them away from the mom so that they can like milk them to give to the consumers, right? The I.e. the humans. Oh, yeah. And then they yeah. they say like the calves are like crying when they're taken away because they have feelings too, right? So for me yeah. as a mom and a mom who breastfed, if that had happened, that would literally the, be the worst thing I could possibly experience. So like, I, I just think it's not, yeah. I think it's, it's, so that's like bad energy. Then they're milking that cow after it just lost yeah. its baby. When the cow is in this horrible state, obviously this traumatic state, right? And even, yeah. even aside from that, it's just like proven it's just loaded with mucus and like all these other things, you know? Yeah. I don't know. It's crazy. But a lot of people are waking up. I just saw something on Instagram and it was like, I think it said in the UK or I think it was the UK. I forget where it was. I saw a post yesterday that the vegan population increased by a million in 2023. Oh, yes. like, wow. Oh, I believe wow. it. I think a lot of people and like I like I always say, if you don't want to go vegan, just like whole food, plant based, eat real food. It makes a huge difference. Cut the processed foods and cut eating like so much of the animal products. You know what I mean? Oh, even in Poland here, like there's vegan restaurants everywhere. That was never wow. the case five years. Ago. Like you couldn't find one restaurant five years ago. No way. Wow. That's yeah. awesome. That's, a, do you think you'll stay in Poland? I'll probably make this my home base and just travel between Canada and probably go to like a hot country in the winter for yes. a couple weeks, maybe a couple months. But I definitely like it here. It's nice. I'm right by the Baltic Sea. I'm like right near the forest. The nice. air, we actually have the cleanest air here in Poland. So it's amazing wow. air. That's huge. That's yeah. really good. Wow. Cause that makes a difference on us too, right? It's not just the food. It's oh. like all these other things too. Cause <laughs> like, well, yeah. Well, air is number one. Number two is water. Number three is food, right? So if you can like control these three things, you're pretty much, you can live forever, you know, and feel great. Yeah. Yeah. And we want to live our best life, you know? And somebody said, congrats yes. to Sylvia. I'm so proud of her. Does her family also eat raw vegan? That is where I struggle. I cook for my husband who eats every, everything and cooked. That's like me too. They, my family's not raw, but yeah, you're the people around you aren't right. You said before. No, no. Nobody in my family is raw. However, I have inspired a lot of them to just simply do juicing. Like even my dad is doing a juice every day. So that's great. Even um, like a green juice a day, it makes a big difference. Is it a green juice that he does? Oh, well, it's carrot, orange, ginger, and apple. But oh, well, that's at good. least it's that's yeah. great. Still, no, that's <laughs> yes. just as good. And yes. somebody said, "What are your best tips for those on a tight budget?" Somebody said, "There are no Asian markets where I live." Looking forward to the interview. Do you have any tips um, for those on a tight I budget? I can't say. Maybe you can. Probably in Canada, if they're in Canada, it's probably. I'm not sure. It's expensive everywhere. It's Even expensive. Here. So I just joined the food terminal because I have a registered business. So I basically now I shop where the grocery stores shop because I do a lot of juicing and a lot of <laughs> I got like so carried away though. I got two cases of bananas, five cases of oranges. I ended up having so much stuff. I had to give so much stuff away to my neighbors. 
but that's pretty good. I noticed it is cheaper. It's not as cheap as I, I was expecting, but it is cheaper. So, but there's ways you can do it with the grocery store. I say, look around in your area, like search all the stores, see where it's the cheapest. We have no frills here, which is pretty cheap. So I do buy a lot of things there. You can ask the produce manager to get things in bulk and buy things by the case. So a lot of times they'll give you a case discount. And I say like, look for what's in season. That'll usually be cheaper too. There are ways to yeah, do it. Season. You know, as and my income is- they have weekly promotions, right? Like every week they have something on sale. So then you just buy more of that that week. And then yeah. wait for the next week, buy more of that, whatever's on sale, right? Because they yeah. have sales every week. Yeah, absolutely. And how did you curb the cravings? Was it hard to give up meat? Meat? No, it wasn't meat that was hard to give up. It was more, it was more like cooked vegan food that was harder to give up, you know, like, yeah, pasta with with like just vegan cooked meals, I think were harder for me to give up. It wasn't the meat at all. Yeah. And your skin is really glowing. I, I can even tell like the skin on your neck and your chest, your skin looks really healthy. You look really good. Do you do they so, have the people around you notice? Have they been like, oh, your skin, you look yeah. good? Have they noticed physical changes? But my skin was always good from the water. It changed seven years oh. ago. Like seven years ago, my skin was horrible. I had brown spots. I had like blotchy skin. And then the water completely changed my skin. That was like seven years ago. So that was my first thing. But now my skin obviously looks even better with, yeah. with the diet, of course. Right? That's what I keep thinking. I, it's all hydration. It it's is. all hydration that makes skin amazing, right? So if, you, if you're drinking the right water, if you're eating the right food, your skin's going to look amazing no matter what. Yeah, this is not the right water that I'm drinking. With your water, is it you just put it in the tap water and then it filters it and it makes it alive and electric? Or you, is that what you do with it? Oh, that's good. Yeah, you can put it on my camera here. That's my sink. I have this in my room. Um, it connects to a faucet with an adapter and it just makes it unlimited. But I also use, it makes a beauty water, which is a 6 pH, which is the exact same as your skin. So I use this daily. And I spray my skin every oh. single day, all day. I have this in my purse and I spray it on my hands and it's amazing. So it's like a natural toner and it's pennies because it makes it unlimited, the machine. So you don't have to buy toners, anything like that. And then you can put like essential oils in it. So I love it. I always spray myself when I'm sitting around. You're making it's always me want on my one. Skin. That's good. Wow. There's many okay. uses. It's not water for, for drinking. Yeah. Okay. And does she keep food simple? i.e. juices, salads, veggies, and dips. Well, you talked a bit about how you do like gourmet and stuff. And somebody was saying, do you have any favorite recipes? So, you know, you said Ava loves raw bread. I'll try link. I'll try put that down below. But yes. is there like staple salad dressing or staple like this or that? That I honestly, I like just a plain cashew sour cream that I make. It's very simple. It's just cashews, water, apple cider vinegar, and a little bit of fresh onion mm. and lemon juice. And you just that and it's so good it tastes exactly like sour cream um, like i said the bread so the cashew cheese i always have it ready to go it's amazing i can also i'm sure you have those recipes you can link yeah I can and i have some i have a re yeah i can link those and i can i'll link my book down below i have a book that has over 100 raw vegan recipes they're easy they're delicious oh, yeah yeah, the book's only yeah. 25 bucks it's really good everybody's been loving it so i'll put that down below if you guys want that and then i'll link oh, it I yeah, yeah, most of my recipes are in your book anyway. So yeah. exactly. No, it's so good. There's so much, so many good things to eat. And like I'm I think seven years in, and even right. now I'm still like loving the foods. I'm so excited. My daughter just went whole foods plant-based. And oh, on this healthy lifestyle, you get even more excited about the foods and the meals. Like I never used yeah. to see her like sit down for her chicken and potatoes or whatever and be so excited. Now she's just like, mm, mm, this is so good. Like truly loving her food. I love it. It's I love it. It's so great. Wow. That's so and good. somebody said, did you take nutritional supplements? So are you supplementing at all or no? I, I'm i like on and off. It's so weird. Every time I like finish them or I throw them in the garbage, I get sucked back into them. But I really, really want to just be off of them completely. Okay. I take them. I don't know. I take yeah. them. Well, I didn't take them for the first few years. And then my B12, my B12 was low. And then I was like, okay, let me take it. And I have interviewed some people that were like, I didn't take it. And then after 10 years, they were noticing like, they'd get really irritable and angry if something happened. Like one guy was like, my computer broke. And I was like smashing it. And then he's like, I didn't think this was normal, like to get this mad. So we realized oh. his B12 was like really low. 
I just think, I don't know. I think it's important to stay on top of these things. So just check the blood work, go by how you feel. And I mean, everybody has to do what's right for them. But I did the vitamin drip. I did vitamin drip therapy. Have you ever heard of this? Have you ever done it? Have you done it? Yeah, yeah, I've, done it before. I've done it before. Oh, I did it for the first time I a couple it. weeks ago. I freaking, I swear to God, I've never felt better in my whole life because I already feel good on this diet. But then I did the yeah. vitamin drip, like the hydration. And then they put in B vitamins. And like, I don't know, we just talked about my lifestyle. And then he put in, some, I never felt so good. Did you like it or no? Like yeah. This was like, because I always see all these influencers doing it. They are even doing it in their podcast because they're like, this is a life hack. This is amazing. Yeah. And I was just like, this is a life hack. I did. I think I only did vitamin C and some B vitamins because I know vitamin C is so important. I do supplement vitamin C because our body doesn't make vitamin C. So that's one I tend to to supplement often. Um, but like I said, I kind of go on and off my supplements. I don't like to take a bunch every day because then I, then I'm thinking like, this is not real. Like what's it doing to my liver? So I have like these, my intuition tells me that they're not the greatest. I don't know if they are or not. It's just my gut feeling tells me that not too many. I wouldn't, I wouldn't take too many supplements. Like maybe, and, and I try to take the liquid ones more. So they're not like in a capsule or like a hard pill. Yeah. I don't know. You know what I do like though? I do try to stay on top of, and I notice a difference. I think it's really important for our brain is DHA, like DHA, EPA. That's in one of my supplements, but I, and then I take extra, like, take that one. but it's the algae, you know, I take, I take like three of them a day. Cause I'm just like, I think it's important, the DHA. And I do notice differences. Like, I think it's important for our mental health and for like, our. Is that's that what, I, one? That's what I think. Yeah. So I take that one or there's another okay. one I order off Amazon too. I have a couple just to have extra laying around. And then it's in, I take an all in one from compliment, which I'll link below and they have some DHA EPA in that, but I just like to take extra. I'll take that like, one too. I have that one too. Yeah. So yeah. like once I take my supplements, I think I'm only going to stick to like two or three, like, like you said, the Omega DHA. Yeah. Um, I like supplement one cause it's more natural and there's like a little bit of everything in that. Yeah. Um, oh, and I do iodine i take iodine spray yeah every day yeah iodine's important because i heard too. that thyroid for breast cancer for women um a lot of us actually iodine is one of the most overlooked and also i learned because of my water that chlorine is linked to a lot of thyroid and, and breast cancers <gasps> no way so that's, what that's that when people drink Drink chlorinated water, bathe in chlorinated water because chlorine, when it's heated up, it's even more toxic. It goes into your body and it actually affects your thyroid. It affects your gut because it's like an antibiotic. It destroys your good bacteria. And they did a study and you have a 90% chance of developing cancer in your lifetime if you're exposed to chlorine. So I don't even go to chlorinated pools anymore. <gasps> Okay. This is making me not, well, I'm not a big fan of pools, but in our condo, we have a pool and our, my daughters love to go swimming all the time. We don't go too much, but yeah, we went, a, we were there like a week or two ago and my one daughter, my husband did like a flip with her and then she drank like a lot of chlorine. And then I was like, Oh no. And then she got a cold after that. And she's like, I think it was the chlorine. Maybe it was. Cause if it acts like an antibiotic, it is, because chlorine is an, it, it's oxidizing to your body. It's a poison, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it, what it does to kill the the bacteria and everything in the yeah, water that does makes the same sense thing in our body. exactly that makes total sense i just realized that yeah i just never feel right about chlorine okay now i'm gonna and the iodine you're right i think with iodine though people have to be careful because if you're not getting enough or you're getting too much you can have problems you have to like make sure it's somewhere in the middle i use like a salt that's iodized from greece like a really clean salt but i know a lot of people yeah. don't want to use salt but there's kelp noodles, some other sources as well. And whatever you're doing too, like that's, it's good to be aware of. Cause a lot of people I think don't even think about that. They're just like, what's iodine, <laughs> you know, lots to think about yeah, guys, I lots to think about. And uh, somebody said, did you find it challenging during family and holiday events? That's a good idea or a good question. Actually. Yes. This year was my first Christmas with my family in 22 years. So I did have some of the vegan cooked stuff and that was probably when I kind of broke. Yeah. So it was Christmas time when I did start eating a little bit of cooked food, but I still stick to vegan. I want to make sure, which is nice because in, in our Polish tradition, uh, we don't have meat. We have vegetarian dishes on the 24th. So it is challenging, 100%, especially if you have big families and you have huge functions. So I always suggest bring your own food and have enough so you're not hungry and kind of yeah. make food that looks, you know, 
make it so it's similar to your, your like Christmas food and just make it healthy version. Yeah. Okay. And do you intermittent fast? Somebody asked, or also do you, well, do you intermittent fast? I'll skip that first. No. Um, I used to, I used to, but I don't anymore. Yeah. Okay. And what about higher fat or lower fat? Have you noticed any differences or lots of fruit, like any ways that you feel best or any ways to avoid or anything? No, honestly, I eat as much fats, fruits, veggies as I want. I don't even track it and I feel good. Yeah. Okay. And somebody was asking what's the machine by your fruit. Cause that was the picture I posted, but we talked about the can and I'll put that down below for you guys for if you want it. And yeah, I think I asked mostly everything. I think. Yeah. Is there anything else you think you want to share that we haven't covered? Like anything people ask you or anything else? I don't know. I really think this is going to be the future diet. Like I remember when I went vegan when I was 23 years old and it was a big thing in Montreal back then. And there was really nothing in Toronto and then it just exploded. And now I feel like raw vegan restaurants are starting to pop up everywhere too. So I think Mm -hmm. this is going to be a part of our future. Like it just has to be, you know, with, I don't know the way things are going, how toxic our world is. Everything is just contaminated. Like even our food is like, even our fruits and vegetables are contaminated, Mm -hmm. you know, and I don't know, like, but we have something. So I'd rather eat the healthier version that's toxic than the unhealthy version that's toxic. You know what I mean? So if I was (laughs) to choose between two, it's like, eat the one that's toxic, but healthier for you, you know, and then I, I, I know I have my machine. So I know I can wash the pesticides properly, I can disinfect, which kills parasites. So definitely clean your food properly, like at least, and don't soak it in chlorinated water, please, because the chlorine goes into your fruits and vegetables. So if you're going to wash your fruits, it's better just to rinse it quickly and scrub it, scrub it with a cloth or something. Because if you soak it in tap water, all the chlorine is absorbing into your fruits and vegetables because the fruits and vegetables are a negative charge. Chlorine is a positive charge. So it goes in like a magnet. Wow. And we do these, we show these live all the time where I'll put a fruit in chlorinated water and that yellow color disappears and goes into the fruit. It goes into your skin. Same way when, you know, when kids swim in pools and they constantly add chlorine. And they were always wondering, why are we losing so much chlorine? They're constantly adding chlorine. Well, they realized the chlorine is getting absorbed into people's bodies. Makes sense. Wow. So You're making me realize how toxic chlorine is. Wow. Use bottled water or filtered water to clean your veggies if you want to soak them, but do not soak them in tap water. Why? Because there is, they put a bit of chlorine in tap water, right? Is that why you say that? Yeah. A lot of chlorine. All That's chlorine crazy. Water, but you now that you see. really put all this in perspective, now that you're talking about chlorine and the all these things are just really clicking in for me with the chlorine in our water. I mean, I don't use tap water, but yeah, I think it is important to good quality water and getting the pesticides off by all organic if you can. But even then, like, you know, and with, yes. yeah. Even then they have sprays. They just have a little bit less sprays, but they still have sprays. And in Europe, it's actually, there's a lot more pesticides that are banned that are not banned in North America. Also something I learned. Wow. So we we kind of like knowledge is power. I know it's overwhelming and people think, oh, you're crazy. You're going to look at this, look at that. But no, it's not looking at everything. It's just like the, the kind of the most important things in your home in your body and focus on those, you know, like make your home clean, you know, mm-hmm. don't use those candles, you know, g- g- get air into your house, open your windows, like just make things that you can control, like change them when you, if you can control them, if you can't, then you obviously can't, can't, mm-hmm. right? So I just look at it that way, whatever I can change, I change. Yeah. Doesn't- do you have any, do you have any yeah. advice for somebody who maybe wants to start out? Maybe they're like, I want to do a year raw or you know high raw whole foods like where should I start or like any tips for somebody who wants to take that on I would just say start by educating yourself so don't jump right into it maybe start watching some videos like your your videos like just go online and start watching a bunch of different videos and that will definitely inspire you inspired me so education is huge having that knowledge and then just you know, maybe start doing juice fasts, water fast, and then, you know, you can do a, a, a juice fast and do it for as long as you can, maybe a week, whatever you can just start with that. Um, do some colonics to clean your body and just implement more fresh fruits and vegetables in the day, you know, it doesn't have to be all raw, but just like make a point, okay, I'm going to have one shake a day, and I'm going to have a huge salad. That's mm-hmm. already a huge step forward. 
and then whatever else you eat, that's fine, but at least you've implemented those. And then, okay, maybe next week I'm going to replace the, this with that, you know, and just baby steps. Cause if you go all in right away too fast, then you might get the cravings and kind of fall back. So I would say just do it slowly and just educate yourself and get your mindset right. And then start. Yeah. That's okay. huge. I think the most like why are you doing this like why is this important to you do you want to yeah. look hot when you're here do you want to yeah. have energy <laughs> do you want to be able to travel you know so for me like I've realized like having a lot of money is is not that important you know it's it's just creating memories and being healthy and feeling good and being with people like I think that's way more important now because you can have a lot of money but you can be empty inside and and you're not happy. So just doing something like this, it just gives you like something to focus on and something to live for and something to inspire people by. Like just find something that you can inspire other others. I think that gives you purpose. That that helps me a lot is just having that to to be an inspiration to others and give people some kind of hope and purpose. Like yeah. What else, you know, that's huge. True. Yeah, good point. Well said. Amazing. Well, I've loved hearing about your journey and catching up with you because I don't think I've talked to you on like a Zoom since the last time we did ours. So your life has changed so much. I love it. I feel like you're headed down a great path. You're taking care of yourself. And I feel like the universe will only continue to like reflect that and treat you well. It's going to be good for you. And I'm happy you came on. And where can everybody uh, find you if they want to touch base with you? I'll link it down below. Let everybody know. Okay. So I, you can follow my Instagram page at the water expert one. So I put a lot of videos on water, um, healthy food. Um, I also have a YouTube channel, same thing, the water expert one, I believe that's the one I can send link you it. the links and yeah. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Well, thanks again for coming on to the viewers. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you got some value. I hope you're inspired to go eat more raw or real living foods or even cooked foods, just whole foods and juices and smoothies and things that just make you feel better and live a better life. And I love you guys so much. Give this a thumbs up, subscribe for more videos like this one. I'll put Sylvia's juice fast video on the screen right now. And another great video of somebody else who did one year raw fruits and vegetables. And we will catch you in the next one. Bye.